Hey everyone, Uncle Jesse here. In today's video, I'm gonna be giving you your first look at the Elgu Neptune 2 FDM 3D printer. That's right, we're not talking about a resin 3D printer by Elgu, we're talking FDM today, and it comes in at only $160. That is a crazy, absolutely crazy price point. So I'm gonna get this unboxed, set up, and we're gonna check out some of the prints that I've been able to run on it so far. Hey, great job on that setup. All right, so in all seriousness, before we get into the video, I just wanna mention that this is being sponsored by Elgu. So I'm not gonna be giving you a review of this or even really an initial impressions of the machine, but what I am gonna do is just give you a look at the prints that I've been able to get off of this $160 3D printer. And I honestly have to say, they look pretty good. So thank you again for Elgu for sending this over to me to unbox and show off here in today's video. Very excited about this. And apparently there was a Neptune one. I just was not familiar with that. I've never heard of it before. I've never seen it. So very excited to see Elgu venturing back into the FDM world. They do such an amazing job with their resin 3D printers. As you guys know, I love printing with the Saturn and the Mars 2 Pro or even the original Mars. So very, very excited to see this machine now up and running and getting some fantastic prints off of it. And actually, before we take a look at the prints, let me just give you some basic details about the Neptune 2. The build volume on this is 220 by 220 by 250. It's a pretty decent build volume there. It is a kit assembly, so I... It's sort of in between just a very quick assembly and a kit. It really only took me about 30 minutes to assemble. Very straightforward and easy to assemble. Uh, the, the, what was great is it has pretty detailed visual written instructions, which was great to see. It also comes with a micro SD card that has all this manual in a PDF form, as well as a video that you will walk you through the actual installation of the printer and all the components of that. It does come with a standard four millimeter nozzle. This thing is super quiet when it's up and running and printing. And I have to say the frame and the body, they did a great job on this as well, where it's all this aluminum metal machining here. For the most part, there are some plastic component, actually, sorry, this is, as I'm touching this, this is actually aluminum metal as well. So I mean, overall build quality is fantastic with this as well. And speaking of being really quiet while it's up and running, that's because it has a 32-bit motherboard and a TMC2225 silent drivers on board here. So it helps really provide that ultra quiet printing process there while this is up and running. It's great to have, I, honestly, I have my office right next to this printing rec recording area. And while I was on conference calls throughout the past handful of days, I was not even able to hear if this was running. And I kept getting up and checking on the printer <laughs> to make sure it was running or if the print had already completed. So it's a nice change of pace from some of the other machines that I've been working with lately. It also does sport a heated bed and a removable, it's a flex plate like system there that you're able to print on and then easily flex your prints off of. The removable build plate is held in place by the typical binder clips that you see on a lot of the other printers that are out there, which works great for me. I'm fine with that as well. The build plate leveling process is really straightforward and simple. There's no auto leveling on the unit, but it's just using the standard knobs underneath the bed to get the build plate level. It does also sport a filament runout sensor that works with the machine as well as print resume if there is a power failure and that cuts off on the printer, you're able to resume your print after power is back up and running. Have I mentioned the touchscreen interface yet? Because the touchscreen is a really nice touch on this machine. It's really simple and easy to use very intuitive and also works in multiple languages. All of your prints are gonna be run off of the micro SD slot on the front of the printer. That also includes, as I mentioned previously, the manual is stored on there as well as some videos. There's also a test print file that you can work with. And they also have a version of Cura that they've set up that works with this unit as well. That version of Cura only works with Windows, so I was not able to get that up and running and test that out with this. I ended up setting up my own profiles within Simplify 3D as well as Prusa Slicer, which are the two slicers that I used for all of the prints that I'm gonna be showing you here in just a moment. 
The first print on the machine that I did was this little miniature statue that you can find on the micro SD card that came with the machine. It came pre-sliced and all that goodness there. So it was really no brainer for me to just run off and try and print. And I ended up printing this with Nico Industries new black silk PLA that's available over on Ziltech.com. If you're interested, I have a discount code there listed on screen and links down below. I really haven't done anything to further configure the machine. I should state, I should state that I did have in the setup process of this a really big boo-boo, which was I did not, these tall frames here, I did not have the bolts that go through the bottom properly installed in them. So there was a bit of a wiggle here and I didn't realize that until after I had printed this guy and I had started on my next print, but I immediately noticed after printing this first piece that it was skewed and I started trying to figure out what the heck might be causing this and then immediately noticed that the frame just wasn't on properly. So I unscrewed everything, re-screwed it down, reprinted and it came out perfect. So in order to properly show off this print, I need to bust out my Razor Crest, uh, obviously Lego edition here. So this is a, exactly what I was hoping to find, which is a stand for this so I can make it look like it's shooting off into space. I then went off and printed one of Chep over at Chuck Hellebit's channel. He has a calibration cube that you can find over on Thingiverse. And this is just a great quick test print file. So I went off and printed this as well with Nico Silk Black PLA. Again, I haven't really modified anything or tried to dial in any of the settings on the printer and it came out spectacular for the most part. I mean, there's a few little layer line inconsistencies there that I believe I could probably just tighten up a few things to get a really, really clean print. But I was just happy to see how great the tolerance was on this as well with one of my calipers. It's pretty much spot on at 20 millimeters. Next up, we have Make Anything's Printception Box. This was printed with Ziltec Purple PLA. It's the same purple that I used for my Magneto cosplay from 2019 for New York Comic Con. And I also printed with some gold silk PLA, the nozzle here. So this is such a Really coolly designed, coolly? A really cool designed file that Devin has made that it's just a really great display piece. For anybody that has a 3D printer that's looking for some storage, this is a fantastic print that you can run off and do. And finally, we have Inspiree's Princess Leia bust that I still have on the build plate here. So I wanted to take this off and remove the supports as well and so that we can see the final results from this print. It was printed in filamentum. I'm not quite sure what this color is. It's like a mint blue green color. It was just a really nice looking filament that I had laying around and decided to use for this particular print. So here, I'll just show you real quick. It does have some flex to it here for the build plate so that you can very easily get in and under with a spatula or just pull your prints directly off of the build plate just like that. I need to adjust my support settings on this new profile. Holy smokes, way too tight on there. All right, so I got all of the supports removed and I've got the bust assembled on top of the base and it's looking Fantastic. Again, for $160, I think this is gonna be a pretty fantastic machine, especially anyone out there that's looking to get started with 3D printing. This might be a great place for you to start, assuming you can find it in stock over on Amazon. I know it already has sold out. It just went up the other day and very quickly went out of stock. So hopefully that will be back and available here in the upcoming days or even this weekend. So stay tuned and keep an eye out on that. I'll try and do my best as soon as I see it available. I'll be posting over on my social medias or directly here on YouTube, similar to what I've done in the past with some of the Elgu Saturn products as well. So again, a huge thank you to Elgu for sponsoring today's video. Again, if you're interested in any of the prints that I've shown off in this video or the machine itself, finding out more information on that, you'll find the links down below. I did wanna say 
a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters as well. If you're interested in finding out more about my Patreon and how you can support the channel and me here and the videos that I make, you'll find links down below for that. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this machine. I'm really excited to run some more larger prints with it, so stay tuned. I'll definitely be doing some further follow-up on this machine, especially over on the social media. It's been posting a lot to TikTok lately. Just really enjoying that platform. If you haven't already, check me out over there. Hey, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye now.